Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, we... Uh, all right, I'm not going to lie. We're on WrestleMania 11. I knew it was going to be a rough watch. I, I remember bits and pieces of WrestleMania 11. It, it, it took some doing to get through this one. And it's odd because this is the shortest WrestleMania. I'm pretty sure it was even shorter than WrestleMania 1. Um. Okay, so it was in Hartford, Connecticut. You know, the glamorous city of Hartford, Connecticut. I've been to Hartford. It ain't so glamorous. I don't even think Hartford gets a raw nowadays. But, um... Uh, all right, you know, let, let's... Oh, this this one, it's it's not... It's, it's not a good watch, guys. I... All right, let, let's just start. Um... The show starts off with uh, actually a pretty sweet moment. Um, there was supposed to be a band to do uh, America the America the Beautiful. I forget who it was. It was definitely not a well-known band. It's Hartford after all. Um, but apparently something happened with them and they canceled or something like that. So they actually had a um. A special Olympian singing America the Beautiful. And she did a great job. The audio is cut off a little bit, so we don't hear that part in the beginning. But I actually looked it up, and I'm like, oh, it's a special Olympic skit. Because it sounds like I thought it was a professional singer or something like that. And I'm like, oh, this is awful. But, you know, sliding scale. Sliding scale, probably no time to prepare. You know, it's. But yeah, yeah, you get. It. Anyway, moving on. The first match. By the way, before we even get to the matches, this WrestleMania has too many celebrities in it. It's got too many celebrities in it. It really does. Uh, there's Lawrence Taylor and all of his ragtag bunch of NFL miscreants. Uh, there's Pam Anderson. There's Jay McCarthy. Nick Turturro, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Salt and Peppa with Spinderella. I always like to throw in the shout out to Spinderella. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot, a lot of celebrities going on. And WWF at this point, I don't know why they're calling everyone by their proper name. Like it's Nicholas Turturro instead of Nick Turturro. It's Jennifer McCarthy because I know I'm sure Jay McCarthy probably wasn't a big thing back then, but. She's known as Jenny McCarthy. Like, because I'm pretty sure this was, what, 94, 95? 95. Singled out, I think, was a thing at this point. If At the very least, she was on MTV or in Playboy. Known as Jenny McCarthy. Um, Baywatch was a thing, and it was Pamela Anderson instead of Pam Anderson. Like, I, I don't know. They're just really weird about celebrity names. And they could have said JTT at one point because people will know who JTT is. I mean, come on. We all know. We all watch Home Improvement. We all saw Lion King. Come on. Anyway, the first match of the evening is a brand new tag team, the Allied Powers. Lex Luger and the British Bulldog. Oof. I don't, I don't think things are going to go well for you guys. Uh, they went up against the Blue Brothers, Jacob and Eli. If you don't know who the Blues Brothers are, um, well, they were employed for quite some time. I, I'm I'm looking right now. The Blue Brothers, also known as DOA, also known as the Harris Brothers, uh, I think they're creative control in WCW. But yeah, um, the Blue Brothers. They're not good. They're led by Uncle Zebekiah, who, if you don't know, is Zeb Coulter. Um, Luger and Bulldog win pretty handily. Like I said, this uh, this only has seven matches on it, you guys. It's, it is a short mania. You know what? This felt like Raw. And if you've watched any Raw wrap-ups recently, you know how I feel about Raw. Uh, but yeah. Then we had the Uncon title match. The Razor Ramon with the one two three kid going up against Jeff Jarrett with the roadie. And um, 
with as few matches as we had on this card, you'd think they'd all have clean finishes. Nope. Uh, we didn't want to switch the title off Jeff Jarrett, but we have to protect Razor Ramon. So Razor wins via outside interference disqualification. I mean, it's an okay match. You know, it's okay as, as, okay as Jeff Jarrett uh, matches can be, but... But, I mean, you know, it's it's just nothing like this WrestleMania is a one match card. Being fully honest, it is a one match card. The match is LT versus Bam Bam Bigelow. That's it. That's all people cared about at this mania. Um, the next match, the third match on the card, The Undertaker. Uh, this one actually has a pretty cool story to it. The Undertaker is looking to get his urn back uh, by going up against the Million Dollar Corporation's King Kong Bundy. And um, this is this is kind of there's there's one kind of cool thing about this is that um, this was during the baseball strike, so they actually had a baseball umpire as a special guest referee. Which uh, I don't think has ever been done before. I think it's probably just Vince McMahon trying to stick it to Major League Baseball. Pretty sure that's what was happening here. But, um, you know, Taker versus King Kong Bundy, you know what happens. Taker wins. Um, but he doesn't get his earn back. Paul Bearer has it for a point, and then Kama knocks down Paul Bearer, takes the urn, and as we know later, he melts it down to a big gold chain, which is. I think they just wanted to get rid of the big urn that had the light in it from the Undertaker versus Undertaker match at SummerSlam. I'm pretty sure that's probably what the gimmick was here. But uh, yeah, Taker adds another notch to his streak, and he's up to three, I believe. No, four. Four. Excuse me. It's four now. Uh, but the next match might be my favorite match on the card just because of who's in it. Uh it's Owen Hart and a mystery partner going up against the Smoking Guns, Billy and Bart. Uh, now, <laughs> Owen's mystery partner, I remember being a kid, and I'm like, oh, I really want Owen to get these titles. I really want Owen to get these titles. And I didn't know who his mystery partner was going to be. And out comes Yoko fucking Zuna. And, I mean, Yoko Zuna, come on. Bret Hart was barely able to beat him. Of course, Yoko Zuna's going to squash the guns. And he does, and Yokozuna and Owen Hart become the new tag team champions. Awesome. I love seeing tag title match at WrestleMania have a finish, and especially a title change. Doesn't happen very often. Uh, but this next match, oh boy. Oh, it's It has all the makings of being something fun. It's an I quit match. It has Rowdy Rowdy Piper as a special guest referee. It's Psycho Bob Backlund against Bret Hart. And man, is it just boring. Oh, it, it's an I quit match that doesn't go 10 minutes. Because Bret Hart was never the most exciting wrestler. He's a very technical one. Very technical one. I can't take anything away from that, but he was never very exciting. And Bob Backlund, bless him. Is just all about catch as catch can. Um, and Piper, like, like they didn't, they, you can tell this wasn't a fully fleshed out idea. Because when Bob Backlund lost, as he did, he didn't even say the words I quit. He said yes. That's been fixed in later years, but I, it was, it was a rough match. Then, then we get, um, before we get to this match, I have to break down a few of the backstage celebrity segments. Um, you know how in WrestleMania 4, Bob Uecker's looking all over the place, looking for Vanna, because he wants to fuck Vanna, basically? Uh, let's transplant that to 1995, and Nick Totoro doesn't want to bang Pam Anderson. He just wants to find her, because he wants to interview her. And he can't find Pamela Anderson. He can't find her anywhere. Uh, there's literally like three segments about him not being able to find Pam Anderson. He did find uh, Jonathan Tell Thomas playing chess with Bob Backlund, 
in the back. That was act- that's actually a pretty amazing segment. If you want to see, I'll say the best part of WrestleMania 11. Find Jonathan Taylor Thomas playing chess with Bob Backlund. It's it's a it's a good segment. It's a good segment. Uh, but yeah, so moving on, we we get to the uh, the title match because Pam Harrison was supposed to accompany Shawn Michaels and Sid out to the ring, but no one can find her. So Shawn comes out with Jamie McCarthy instead. And then Diesel comes out. He, he gets a little shattered glass entrance, which is kind of cool. And then he calls out Pamela Anderson. And Sean and Sean and Diesel have a match. Bless their hearts, they are trying. They know that this show has not gone well. There's been a lot of audio issues. There's been there's a lot of technical goof ups and stuff like that. Uh, there are so many cameramen outside the ring for this match. Brett and uh, Brett, uh, Sean and Diesel, like try to push them out of the way because they're trying to have a match. These guys are interfering with the matches. Um, but Sean is selling his ass off. He's really, he's really putting in the effort. But, uh, I mean, and, you know, you know, Sean Michaels isn't gonna win this. He's not the main event. It's not Mr. WrestleMania time yet. They don't even call his super kick sweet chin music yet. In an interview afterwards, uh, Shawn Michaels does hit the super kick, but I'm not sure if this was real or if this was part of the story. It looks like Earl Hebner tweaked his ankle when he was hopping to the outside. And if that's a real thing, that just means this WrestleMania is even more botchy than normal. But, um... Sean does hit the super kick and Diesel does stay down. So the finish is there. They just have not called it Sweet Jim Music. No one's called it that yet. So I'm guessing that's probably something we get next year with uh, the Iron Man match. But yeah, uh, Diesel wins, delivering a sloppy ass jackknife. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy ass jackknife. And uh, he celebrates with Pam Anderson and Jay McCarthy. Shawn Michaels' that post, post-match post interview is actually really good, too. But uh, moving to the main event. Oh, man. And I'm not sure if they thought they were pressed for time because the entire Million Dollar Corporation, everyone runs out. I mean, maybe they're trying to treat it like a football game where everyone's running through a tunnel. I don't know what the deal is, but everyone was running out, even Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase shouldn't run when he's in his like, suit attire and everything. Uh but Lawrence Taylor gets sung out to the ring by Salt and Peppa. Uh, he has Ken Norton Jr. with him, Chris Spielman, Carl Banks, Ricky Jackson. I know one of those guys. But he also has Reggie White with him, who everyone knows who Reggie White is. And future Four Horsemen member, Steve Mongo McMichael. That's right. Uh, Steve Mongo McMichael na- made his professional wrestling debut at WrestleMania 11. Good for him. Uh But yeah, if you've never seen this match, it's definitely an interesting watch. Um, I'm not going to say it's the best celebrity performance at WrestleMania. I still think at this point that goes to Mr. T. Uh, But LT really busts his ass. Like, I, I I give him all the credit in the world. He delivers, like, a semi jackknife powerbomb to Bam Bam Bigelow. Like he delivers a suplex, I gotta say the the second arm, for, the second rope forearm, is pretty awesome. But I don't know, it's it's a fun match. Bam Bam is really really busting his ass. He he was really really trying hard. I think he knows this is probably the only time he's ever going to main event WrestleMania, and it's actually his last WrestleMania too, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, uh, Lawrence Taylor obviously wins. As, as you would expect. It's a celebrity match. But yeah. Uh, overall. This Wrestlemania. Not stellar. Not stellar at all. Um, but next year should be better. I don't remember a lot of the other matches. Besides the Iron Man match. But I guess we'll see when I get to it. Uh, I forget where that one's from. I think it's. I want to say Anaheim. I'm not entirely sure on that. But. We'll check when I uh, watch WrestleMania 12. So, um, I've been Mad Mike. If you have any differing opinions about WrestleMania 11, 
Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at manmike4883. Hit up at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM. Leave some comments down here in the YouTube or hit us up on Facebook. All right. So for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias of Mike. Oh. Uh,